Well, I'm Marcus from Heel Toe, and this is Zach, and we're putting this video together to examine the Tane Medieval Pro suspension versus the BC Racing suspension for the 84-87 to CRX and Civic chassis, and uh, they also fit um, on the 86-89 to Integras. Uh, so really, there's not a whole lot available for these cars, um, but Heel Toe does this Medieval Pro brand with Tane. This is a private label product that we make for this car. Zach is a little bit uninitiated with these parts, but he's an engineer, so thought it might be kind of cool to get some input from him and his ind independent thoughts on how these kits are designed and how they work in the car. And I uh, happen to have my car up on the rack so that you can see the suspension too, so, so this is it. There's a, there's a front and a rear to both. These are the rears with these spring these spring seats and they sit up in the in the chassis of the car and uh, this goes on the lower mount at the axle in the back and they're basically struts so are the fronts the fronts are struts too do you know the difference between a shock and a strut Zach? Probably not well enough to give it a lot of detailed thought so well effectively effectively a strut is a damper, but it also works as a suspension member too. So on these cars, uh, you see the steering knuckle is here, um, and the strut mounts to the knuckle and up into the top of the chassis. There's no upper control arm to locate the steering knuckle. And so a strut is not just a damper, it's part of the suspension too in terms of like a structural component. If we took the strut out, then you know the hub would be falling all over the place. So the rear is a strut also, um, but a little bit different. It's mounted to the to the axle beam in the back. Okay. And then there's trailing arms and then the struts go up. So if you took the dampers out, the rear end would just fall out of the car. So the general definition is that a strut is a suspension member as well as a damper. Pretty important to keep the car firmly planted and aligned on the ground. So also what that means is uh, as the car is turning and braking and doing all these other motions that a car does, there's a lot of load on a strut that isn't on a shock absorber. So because a strut is a suspension member too, the strength of that component is actually pretty important because if it flexes, then you're gonna get like wonky handling. And so this was the basis for designing the Medieval Pro suspension the way that we did. Um, typically, the shaft diameter up here is 10 millimeters, but you can see with this one, this just huge shaft that we have. Yeah. And that is because it, it makes the whole assembly more rigid. Um, this, I'm not gonna take this out of here. This is a Tokiko shock. It's a 10 millimeter also, but it tends to be the same diameter all the way down. So while it's adequate, it's not as performance oriented because it doesn't have as big of a diameter. So we designed this one to have a really big shaft diameter because it's really rigid. You know, if you're gonna try to bend that. Rigidness kind of helps make sure that it's not really gonna move throughout the life of that shock. Also, with less deflection, you have better seal wear. Now, you'll notice that the uh, corresponding part from BC Racing is quite a bit different looking. It's got a coil spring on it. Um, it's pretty typical to have a coil over damper or coil over strut in this case um, on a lot of modern cars, but this car you could see here and and on the car it doesn't have a coil spring. So you need a spring. What are we using here? Do you know? No. The This is the part that throws off a lot of Honda people even because this car is designed with a unique front suspension that most other Hondas don't have. It's a torsion bar? It's a torsion bar, exactly. Well, that's a sway bar here, but you can see here, 
there's a torsion bar in this tube. Oh, okay. So um, the front end connects to the lower control arm and the rear end is uh, anchored against the body. This tube is, is anchored against the body. So it's a torsion bar suspension. A, a torsion bar is just a bar that twists and that provides a springing. Got it, helps to slow down the rapid rebounds and gives a little more controlled motion. Right, in addition to holding the car up, but you know, not being a rigid mount. So yeah, these cars have a torsion bar suspension. And if you're to kind of believe the Honda PR from the day, that was because they were able to get away from using a coil spring that takes up a little more space and they lowered the hood line and uh, made it an overall tighter package. There's other advantages too. You could see that most of the mass in the, in the spring is really low in the car. It's all down here underneath the floor and of course the lower mass Better center of gravity. is a lower center of gravity. Exactly. And it's also a little more inboard than what you would have on a coil spring up there. There's one other advantage to this setup and that is that the mass associated with the spring, the torsion bar, is all unsprung. I mean, it doesn't move with the movement of the suspension. In a strut car, you kind of have all that mass, it kind of moves a little bit with the up and downs of the suspension and that can kind of numb the feeling here when the wheel rate is changing. It's not necessarily the best suspension layout in the world, but it's what they chose. This car has been made now for 30 years, and for as long as I can remember, I've been messing with these cars since my first car was an 84 CRX, and I got it in uh, 1994 or something like that. So <laughs> I've been playing with these cars for over 20 years. Yeah. And really? Not a lot. <laughs> well, right. Ever since then, ever since I've been with this car, people could never really completely wrap their brains around what this was all about. And they always wanted this, because it looks a lot more conventional. This um, coilover damper arrangement is just a lot more familiar to a lot of people. If I want to lower the car, I just loosen this, and then I can raise and lower the car. Where? Disadvantages though, and putting that spring in, if you wanted to force a spring like this into a setup like this, what's the disadvantage? Well, there are a few, but they seem, some of them scientific and some of them seem a little theoretical, right? First of all, a lot of this mass ends up being higher up in the car, as opposed to the torsion bar setup. That's not quite as good for center of gravity. Pretty much everybody could agree that from a technical standpoint, that's not as good, but from a realistic standpoint, eh, kind of who cares, right? Um, but at the same, it, it's true. Not only that, when you put this spring on here, what do you do with the torsion bar and stuff that's already in the car? There's a bunch of equipment in the car in the subframe that's designed for use with the torsion bar. You can't just take it all out. You know, the lower control arm and the mounts and stuff are still designed the way they are. Yeah. So this would probably like fight against the torsion bar and then somebody affecting this or make the car handle in a way that wasn't really designed to handle that way. Well, ultimately, I think you could take this, the torsion bar out of there. You could take the torsion bar out and the control arm would move freely. And then you'd just be using this for support which there's nothing really wrong with that, right? And you would be losing some of the mass from the torsion bar in that sense. Now, I just heard recently that this spring is actually not stiff of enough of a spring for the front of this car. And so it's designed to be used as a helper spring. So that would then make the design even more critical how it is to work. Yeah, it would have to kind of complement the torsion bar that you have in the car then. But to me, I don't really buy that. That's too much of a spring to be just a helper spring. Other helper springs I've seen are extremely thin and very soft. You could compress them with your fingers and I really can't. I mean, I can move them. It's not a stiff spring, it's not a heavy car, but I don't believe that's a helper spring at all. I believe that that is supposed to carry the weight of the car. Hmm. Is there any mounting differences that make that setup more challenging to fit in because 
this assembly up top is much different than that assembly. It is. There's an upper mount in the car that looks really similar to this. What you would do is, is take the upper mount. So you can kind of see up there, there, you would just take that upper mount out and put it on the top of the Medieval Pro suspension and you'd have basically the same chassis mounting. Or, you know, we make other, we have other different kinds of mounts that adjust alignment angles uh. as well. Like, because if you move this back, you'll get more caster, and if you move it in, you get more negative camber, and these are all good for performance, so. So you've got some upper mount options with the conventional setup, because that's how it was designed, really. It was designed around the factory setup. As far as other mounting concerns, um, one of the things that myself and some other people in the community surrounding this car have been concerned about is load bearing. So when I put weight on, on the car, when I put the car on the ground and the torsion bar is acting, the force is being carried through this torsion tube. It twists here and this reinforced area of the car is meant to bear the load of the, the spring, right? Okay. Yeah. It's all underneath here and part of the subframe effectively. But when we put this other coil spring arrangement and we put the car on the ground, the load is all being borne by the strut mount up there. So the prevailing argument against this sort of a setup has always been that the car was never designed to have the weight carried up there. 